Hello iOS fans, Robin here, um, giving uh, you the lowdown on my uh, deck for the game I'm going to play with Pete, where we're going to play with the uh, uh, Catafrain, I can't remember what it's called, Catafrain Artifact, the one, that the, the other alternative uh, version of the game where it's an artifact in the middle of the board. And with that in mind, I'm actually going to play Stormcast, and I think they'll be hard to, to move off, off of it. I have to set the board up so I can get on it fairly early on in the game. My plan is to set up the Stormcast and sit on the line and hope that I can hold it for as long as possible. So, with that in mind, here are my cards. Um, I've gone for a couple of score immediately cards to start off with, or inspiring. Uh, score this immediately if your warband has taken two or more fighters out of action in this phase. Um, and score this immediately, and lightning strikes, score this immediately if an enemy fighter is taken out of action by a charge action made by one of your fighters. Hopefully I can pull one or two of those off, that would be great, uh, obviously. Uh, and with that in mind, I've gone for Crushing Force. If I can uh, do double damage uh, to, to take somebody out, then, um, then I'll get an extra glory. And I've also gone for Brawl, because I imagine that I shall be up against it uh, in the middle of the park. So I shall be trying to score Brawl. And then I've also gone for a couple of cards, Ploymaster and Geared for War, that hopefully I can uh, manipulate myself to score. If things aren't going very well, hopefully I can score those myself by either adding some, um, uh, playing some Ploys or adding some gear to my uh, people. But of course, if I haven't got much glory, it'll be difficult to add gear. But we'll see, we'll see how we go. Um, seeing I'm going to be trying to hold the centre line, I've played Twilight Con Conqueror. Uh, because that scores in an end phase if all your surviving fighters are neither in your territory nor enemy territory. Interesting one to try. I've never imagined I would play that, but with the artifact being in the middle, I'm going I'm to go for it. Consecrated area, score this in an end phase if there are no enemy fighters adjacent to your fighters. Good luck with that, but you never know with Stormcast. Um, so that's, <laughs> that's what I should be trying. Uh, and I have uh, Sigma's Boark. Score this in the end phase if none of your fighters suffered any damage in the preceding action phase, which means if they're all dead, I might score that one. And I've also gone for Conquest. Score this in the third end phase if all your surviving fighters are in your opponent's territory. Now, I wonder whether to put this in. It might be a mistake, but if for some reason I'm not on the, um, I'm not on the artifact, then I can always hopefully pop into Pete's territory and pick up a couple of glory. You never know. And then finally, I've gone for Superior Tactician. Uh, it's a bit of a gamble, this one. I'm hoping I'll score enough of my cards to score Superior Tactician at the end of the game. We shall see. So uh, that is my objectives for the Stormcast deck. Um, hopefully it'll work out all right. And then uh, this is what I've got to support those cards. So my ploys. I'm basically going to be playing very defensively, trying to sit on that artifact and hope that I can move off of it. So, with that in mind, I've got stormed forward resistance. Friendly fighters cannot be driven back by the first to take action in the next activation. Stormforge tactics. In the next activation, you can make a following reaction. After an enemy fighter's attack that fails, choose up to two friendly fighters and push them up one hex each. Now, this one is kind of for when things aren't going as well as I might have hoped. I can maneuver, uh, maneuver my men to somewhere a bit more useful. That's what I'm hoping. Healing Potion, could be very useful when trying to defend myself. Mighty Spring, first attack action with a range characteristic of one in the next activation targets all enemy fighters. Adjacent enemy fighters were hoping I'm going to be in the middle and surrounded. So that will be helpful there. Shardfall, place a Shardfall token in an occupied hex. The hex is blocked till the end of the next phase. Never played Shardfall before. I reckon again it could be useful to give myself a bit of cover and maybe in one activation, one turn, you never know. Peel of Thunder, choose an enemy fighter and push them one hex in any direction, useful for alleviating the pressure or getting Pete off of that uh, artifact if he's on it. Heroic Guard, choose a friendly fighter and put them on guard. Again, a defensive move. Confusion, two fighters, choose two fighters that are adjacent to each other, again, very useful for catching that artifact. Sidestep, if I do push Pete off, then maybe I can follow up. And similarly, distraction used for, for moving Pete off of, off of the artifact. So they're my ploys. Not a bit too controversial in there, I don't think. Have to see how that goes. 
So that's my ploys. Moving on, here are my uh, upgrades. And there, again, not very anything very exciting or controversial. We've got the Blessed by Sigma, plus one wound. Great Fortitude, plus one wound. Great Strength, plus one damage. Shield Bash, uh, if uh, somebody's fighting Angaran and they fail, then I can push them back and I cannot be driven back. Block, uh, Fighter and all the Jason Fighters go on guard. Another uh, Bright Shield card. Army of One, if things aren't going very well, Army of One could be very useful. This fighter is the, la the last friendly fighter on the battlefield. They have plus one defense, and all of their attack actions have plus one dice. You never know. Blessed Armor, when you roll uh, exclamation mark, a critical for this fighter, when they're targeted by an attack action, remove one wound taken before any damage is dealt. I mean, it's not gonna come off that often, but it's on there, and they're under the cosh. I, I may save myself the occasional uh, roll, especially if it'll have two be rolling two dice, it's worth putting on for Stormcast, I think. Uh, if I am left on my own, helpful whispers if this fighter has no adjacent friendly fighters, uh, rolls of uh, single assist uh, are a success when I am attacking. Soul Trap. Now, I've got the end here, I've gone for two 50 50 cards, and I don't very often play those, but I think in this game, on balance, they're worth it. I've gone for Steelheart's Fatal Riposte during an attack action that targets this fighter and fails while on attack dice. Uh, and on, a, on a hammer or a crit, I cannot be taken, I cannot be driven back, and I can make an attack action. It's, uh, it's Steelheart specific, uh, and it is only 50% of the time, so it's not brilliant, but I just thought it could save the day. And similarly, I've gone for uh, Soul Trap uh, during an attack action or ploy that takes this fighter out of action roll a defense dice, and if I roll a hammer or a shield, uh, they suffer no damage, and they're not taken out of action, and then I discard the upgrade. So it's like a free a free life, as it were. So I've put that in, I know a lot of people like that card. I don't normally like 50-50 cards, because I like to know what's going to happen, but I just feel that in this game, it's gonna be, it could be useful. I'm not trying to go anywhere. I, I need to keep as many people alive as possible, so. I've put that in, whether I'll ever get to get it out or not depends on how well I do, I suppose, on the battlefield, whether I get that glory. We shall see. So that is my uh, Stormcast deck for our uh, artifact game. So I hope that was useful to you, to you. I've not played an artifact game before, so perhaps I've missed some obvious cards there. Do pop in the comments if you think so. Uh, and um, enjoy the game when it comes up. And uh, until then, goodbye. Bye.